Ooh, it's a hot one today. It's in the upper 90s and very humid, high dew point, very hot. So I'll come in and have a nice refreshing glass of water. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. How, when we first moved out here, now it's, we've been here for 13 years, but a little before that, we used to live, I guess what you might say, we had that hand to mouth mentality. You know, when you just go to the grocery store when you run out of food and you just go from there. And how over the years we've changed to an abundance mentality. You know, you're looking at the news. I just saw last month inflation was 9%. Inflation is higher in a lot of other products. Some things are even 100% inflation. So I hear from so many people through social media, from DMs, you know, when we go to our speaking engagements and we talk to people, people still have that mentality of hand to mouth. I kind of wanted to show you today some ways that you guys can get that abundance mentality. Come on, I want to show you. So this plant right here is a stevia plant. Many of you guys may not have ever seen one. This is a nice green plant. Stevia is about 200 times or so sweeter than sugar itself. It has zero calories. It doesn't spike your blood sugar. It has zero carbs. I mean, it's, it's wonderful, especially if you're a diabetic. Once you get it going, you can overwinter it and keep it year after year after year. I always plant a bunch in the garden and then I also will overwinter and I always make sure I have one that I have in a pot that I bring in the house. Let's say you're not able to get sugar anymore. Let's say you can't have, you don't have honey or you have maple syrup or anything and you want something to sweeten your foods. This would be a great alternative. We are going to dehydrate some stevia. And I wanna just talk about dehydrating, period. I did a video the other day um, in the All American Sun Oven, how it's like one of the best things you can get from your prepping because you could cook all your meals in it without having any electricity whatsoever and you can cook all year round and you can dehydrate things as well as you can you know, purify your water. I mean, it's an amazing tool to have. Okay, let's say I dehydrate this, I might get this much. A little goes a long way. So this is something that anybody could do. If you had a patio, if you had a little spot with some sun, you know, you lived in an apartment, no matter where you are, if you had a few pots, you could plant herbs, a plant of sage, a, a plant of thyme, basil, oregano. I mean, I can put all those in one pot and it could grow. So in order to dehydrate something, you're going to need to dehydrate it at a very low temperature. So if you would do it at like 300 or so, you're gonna destroy a lot of the good beneficial enzymes in what you're, you're dehydrating. And we wanna keep those, that's the wonderful thing about it. Now, when you're dehydrating, you're gonna need, you know, some type of tray or a rack. You can do this in your oven if you don't have an All-American Sun Oven. Now, when dehydrating, the temperature that you choose is gonna be very crucial because we do wanna keep all the wonderful nutritional benefits in it. You wanna dehydrate it at about 95, 100 degrees or so. And when we are putting our parchment on the rack, not all parchment is created equal. So you're getting a little nugget in this one today. So you have two types of parchment. We have the regular white parchment and it contains a toxic substance called dioxin. When it gets heated up, it could definitely cause some problems, some health issues. And you have unbleached parchment. This is unbleached parchment. So if you have a choice, I definitely get the unbleached parchment. Now the All American Sun Oven has these little trays these dehydrating trays like this that come with it. And if you go to offgridwithdougandstacy.com, we have a special package. I even did a little cookbook in there that you can do in the sun oven. And you can check that out and get the little Doug and Stacy package. So simple, simple. All you're gonna do is get what you're gonna dehydrate. I'm gonna do the stevia. A lot of people will take each leaf off and set it on there. That takes way too much time for me. I'm going to set the whole stem on there like so. 
Make sure you have a little space so they, it gets airflow. You don't want to put them one on top of one another when you're dehydrating. You need to make sure that it can get airflow through it. Some people are like, green stevia? I've never seen green stevia. Because when you go to the store, you get it in the powder, it's white. White stevia. And white stevia is highly, highly processed. The green stevia is actually, you're using the whole plant, and when you dry it or dehydrate it, it's more flavorful, and it hasn't been processed. It has a slight licorice-y kind of taste, and I really think it enhances drinks and teas and things. If I grind it up and make it into a powder, it has a very, very long shelf life, many years. So I'm all about that. If I had to choose, I definitely would always go with the green stevia because I'm using the whole plant. The white stevia, it extracts just one part of it. You know, it takes a certain element, I think the like really sweet part, they'll take it out. It's sort of like pharmaceutical medicine. You know, when you look at herbalism, when they treat people, they treat people using the whole plant, okay? In medicine, they'll just take parts of the plant out. And a lot of times that could cause side effects also. And did you guys know, one teaspoon of this that I just dehydrated, just kind of ground it up like a tea, one teaspoon of that is equivalent to one fourth cup of sugar. Crazy, huh? So look at this, something like this would last a very long time. So when we're talking about that abundance mentality, dehydrating things is the way to go because you're gonna go ahead and get that nutrition from it. You're gonna be able to store things. If you don't have a lot of space, a lot of room, it's a great way to go. And I think I'm ready. So all I'm gonna do on the sun oven is I'm gonna stack my trays like that. So I want you guys to notice something. The sun is right there. So if I was gonna be cooking something in the sun oven, it's gonna be pointing right here and I'm gonna get the hottest temperature. I have my sun oven pointed away because we wanna dehydrate it about 100 degrees, 95 to 100 degrees or so. So away from the sun is where you want this to be. So I set the trays in here. Now I want you guys to notice something. If you are using your sun oven, come over here and watch. Here's my little things that close it securely. I don't wanna close this because I don't wanna cook this. I'm gonna dehydrate it. So I just leave it like that so that the lid can just rest on it. So I can get airflow. Remember, we want the airflow through there. So I'm gonna let it start doing its dehydrating and a little bit I'm gonna come and I'm gonna switch my racks and put another one on top because the top one is gonna dehydrate a little quicker. So if you guys are doing this and you're in an oven on a low temperature or maybe in the car somewhere, you know, where it's not really, really hot, you don't wanna put it in direct sun because it'd probably get a little too hot. Just watch it and then if you're having extra trays and you need to move things around, go ahead and check on it. Don't just let it go the whole time and forget about it. Just kind of watch it and see you might need to move some of the leaves around. This has been about an hour and I'm just going to flip them a little bit so they evenly do their thing. If you can see, these are already getting crunchy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this go about two hours, two, three hours, and we'll be back and I'll show you what we're gonna do with this. Right, it's been about two hours, a little over two hours, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I process it. So come on in. So you just wanna make sure when you are dehydrating, whatever you're dehydrating, to save for later, because we're thinking about abundance, right? Abundance mentality. You just wanna make sure that there's no water. So when I crunch this one, there's no water, it's very dry. So all I'm gonna do is just crunch my leaves off right off the stem. You know, you can find stevia plants at some of your box stores. It was harder to find them this year. I know a lot of people had mentioned that to me. So you can grow this. It is a little harder to get it started germinating. So if you get a packet of seeds, you can go to wearseeds.com. I know they have them. There's other places that carry them. 
but you can get the seeds, just plant a whole lot more than you would normally plant because germination rate is a lot lower. And when you do plant them, they like it nice and warm. So if you have one of those heating pads, you know, for the seeds, definitely will work. But always plant a lot more. All right, so look at this. See how easy that was? There you go. And I'm gonna put it in my jar. And then when my other trays are ready, I'll go back and get those. And I'll just keep putting them in my jar, like so. And then make sure you always label. I always like to use a Sharpie, so you know what it is, like that. And then I'll show you how I do it. So let me just show you how simple this is. So here's our handy dandy tea infusers. You can get those at offgridwithdougandsaisy.com. They're wonderful. So all I'm gonna do is put a nice little pinch of my stevia that I just dehydrated. And then maybe I'm gonna put a little nettle. So I'm gonna do a blend. So you can put some nettle, whatever kind of tea you have, if you have peppermint. And then maybe I'll put a little ginger, some dried ginger root in there. So there you go. So I have my stevia, so it's gonna sweeten it up. I don't have to worry about putting any sweetener in it. Nettle and ginger. I made a wonderful tea blend. I'm gonna pour my hot water over it. You can go ahead and do it like that. If you wanna drink it hot, go ahead and drink it hot. If you wanna put some ice to it, make it into an ice nettle infusion with my stevia. So see how simple that is? I have sweetener that's gonna last me a very long time. I'm just gonna process it throughout the season. And then there you go. So that's what I want you guys to think about. You know, all these things out there, even if it's your kales or your Swiss chard, if you're foraging and you're going out and getting your lamb's quarter or your dandelion greens, these are things that you guys could dehydrate. If you don't have an All-American Sun oven or you, you know, your oven doesn't work, you can put it in the back of your car on a tray and just let it sit there until, you know, you feel it get a little crunchy like I did so there's no more moisture in it. And then there you go. And not to mention, if you're making teas and de dehydrating teas, go ahead and grow it in a pot. And then you can dry it out, just hang it up, let it dry out. And then you can go ahead and save so much money. For a packet of, you know, organic or some good teas, peppermint tea, for just maybe like 16 tea bags, it's $5. When you could just grow it in a pot and you could get a ton of peppermint, look how much money you're saving. So we are all going to be frugal. We're gonna have that abundant mindset, right guys? We're gonna survive, but we're gonna thrive when we're doing this surviving. And I wanna congratulate Melinda because she won the All-American Sun Oven. Yay, woohoo! Let's say hello and good job to Melinda. And, if you guys are not registered at offgridwithdougandstacy.com, Doug and I are giving away tons of stuff this whole month of July. So you better make sure that you are registered at offgridwithdougandstacy.com because you never know when we're going to give something away. We've already given away a few thousand dollars worth of stuff. So in the sun oven, we just gave away today. So I want you guys to leave a comment below if you are going to survive and thrive and have that abundant mindset. Talk to you soon. Bye.